starting with MST. So the MST is a peasant movement that organized people to struggle for agrarian reform and for the democratization of land in Brazil, right? So I believe most of the people in Latin America knows, but Brazil has one of the highest land concentration in the world, right? It's one of the, let's say, the, the foundations of the Brazilian state is basically the large states, monoculture and, and, and slavery, slave work. And those foundations are still a very strong heritage that we have in Brazil. So a lot of people with no land, a very high land concentration, structural racism, all of this comes from, I mean, our vocation for exporting commodities and, and all this comes from these foundations of the Brazilian state. So when we struggle for the democratization of land and for agrarian reform in a country like Brazil, we are struggling to change the foundations, the basis of this unequal society that we have here. Right, MST, we have today one around 1.5 million people organizing in MST, in camps and settlements. Uh, and uh, when we talk about agrarian reform, we are talking about much more than only distribution of land, but how we build a new model of agriculture that is basically founded on agroecology on producing healthy food for the people of a uh, healthy relationship with the nature, uh, new relations with people. It's a new mode of new form of organizing life in our territories. Today, we are living under a very strong threat of evictions in Brazil. I believe you see, you've seen the demonstrations and, uh, and then we are talking about urban evictions, but also about rural evictions. We are talking about 30,000 uh, families that are at risk of being evicted and losing not only their houses and their territories, but their, their forms of surviving because they live from the, that, that land. And we are talking about uh, places that... Um, People have been living there for more than 10 years. So they have good schools. Children have was, were born there. That are the, are the places, the only place that those people have known uh, in many cases. So even today we are uh, having this uh, Twitter storm to make pressure on the Supreme Court to uh, to keep the, the law that is um, suspending all the evictions until at least until the end of the year. But those are, are one of the main struggles that we are now. The housing movements and the uh, land movements are together. Uh, we have two days to try to pressure the, the Supreme Court uh, not to, um, to pro prorogate. Uh, the, the, the suspension of the evictions. Um, for us, the, the, the second main struggle this year is we need to change the government. But the lessons from Latin America have told us, and not only from Latin America, but from the last period, have told us that earning the election is not enough. I mean, we can earn the election, but we need people organized, one, to guarantee that our project, that we can advance in our project because uh, the governments are, going, are always going to be in, in dispute, but also organize the people to be able to defend that government, right? The extreme right in Latin America, well, in the whole world, but I may say that in Latin America have been uh, much stronger in the last years and so we need to be organized to to defend our project and that's what we are calling the people's committee so the people's committees are like 
basically grassroots work in the communities uh, to organize people want to discuss what do we need for this country? What do we need to improve the living conditions? What are the solutions for the problems in the territories? And also to build this space where people can basically participate and, and feel that uh, the decisions for the country are not only in the hands of the government. It must be in our hands. So we need to organize and to be able to participate uh, to guarantee our rights and to guarantee that uh, we may be able to improve the conditions of this country. Now, for us, it's, I mean, the victory of Petro and Francia is very symbolic. Uh, it's very symbolic for the people of Colombia, but it's very symbolic for the whole Latin America. I mean, Colombia is the main... Uh, we say in Latin America that Colombia is the Israel of Latin America, right? So it's the basic of imperialism, it's the main ally of the United States. Having a progressive government in first, first time in history in Colombia changed the whole geopolitics of Latin America, you know? I mean, we're not saying that he's going to make the revolution, and we know that even if he wanted it would be almost impossible to make a revolution in this situation. So he's going to have a lot of pressure, even from the United States. You know? And all of this we need, because sometimes we just say, ah, he's betraying his base, he doesn't want to do, and we need to see the, the whole picture. And he's going to be pressured from all sides. But for us in Brazil, I mean, in Latin America, I wouldn't say only in Brazil, uh, it changed the map of Latin America. Having Colombia with a government which is not 100% aligned with the United States. Uh, it changed the situation for Venezuela. It, it changed the situation for Brazil. And we do believe very strongly that the only way for Latin America is building another kind of regional integration. And, of course, having Petro in the government, having uh, AMLO in Mexico, having, if we have Lula in Brazil, if, I mean, having Argentina, Honduras, Peru, we are building a group of countries uh, that even with all the limits that they may have in the government to make radical change, but they can start building an integration that will help the national governments to make bigger change. You know what I mean? Uh, the pressures that we we have from 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 the United States and from imperialism, we don't face it uh, isolated. You know, but if you can build this block, as we started doing in the, some years uh, ago, to face the United States hegemony in, 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 in Brazil and to build um, alternatives between, amongst us for commerce, for uh, exchange and so on, it certainly will make a lot of difference for all those governments.